Well, hello. Welcome to Philly Philly. Um, I'm Philly. I'm Amy. And I'm streaming by myself today. So that makes me feel a little sad. You know, I love it when my hubs is with me or um, maybe I'm streaming with a friend or maybe my son. Um, however, today I'm on my own. So there's some good news with that. So the good news with that is that uh, my husband is away for a weekend with his friends. So I think that's awesome. Um, in fact, we have been married a long time and I will say that's one of my best pieces of marriage advice is to make sure you have time away. Um, I'm gonna turn the music down, it's a little loud. I decided to have some music with this cooking stream because, because it's just me, so I'm worried it's gonna be boring. This won't be a long one. So if you have been sweltering, if you are in the season of summer, um, like I am here, and you might not be, you might be in a different season depending on where you're, where you're listening from. But if you are in the season of summer, it has been a hot one. And so this is a perfect meal for a hot summer day. It does involve a little bit of cooking, um, but just boiling some water and then everything else is done in a bowl and added when the pasta is done. And it's one of my favorite pasta recipes. Um, it's lemon spaghetti and it's by Giada De Laurentiis. And I love Giada. In fact, I will say that she is probably one of the people that got me hooked on like the Food Network and watching um, the cooking shows. And it's, when I think about it, I remember years ago when my husband and I were first married in our first apartment and they didn't have a cooking channel at that point because that's, you know, that's how old I am. But what they did have was, I think it was on, I'd have to ask him, I think it was on PBS for those in the States. And there were some cooking shows on, I think it was Sunday morning. It was Saturday or Sunday morning. There were a couple cooking shows on each morning. And I would just, we'd bring our coffee to bed and sit there, read the paper, because you know, that's when we all had papers. Now we get all of our news. Some people still read from the paper, but many of us get news um, from tablets. But hi, DS. Good to see you, thanks for joining. I was just talking about how we all get the news now. Back when I was first married, we were getting the news from the newspaper and the TV, obviously, but now a lot of people get news from you know their homepage. How do you like getting the news? I'm not sure what your preferred way is, but I was reminiscing to when I first started watching cooking shows back when I was first married, and um, I would be reading the paper, and we would be, you know, I'd be watching my cooking shows, and that was a really kind husband because I gotta be honest, he wasn't really interested in the cooking shows, but I was. And I've got to remember who, it was a woman that I was watching cook, and I don't recall who she was, but I was, I just, I thought she did a great show and I always got great ideas. And that's honestly, you know, my biggest hope is I am by no means a chef, I'm a home cook, but, um, but I've been cooking for a long time and I cook practically, meaning like I'm cooking for, I cooked for small children, you know, I cook for adult children, um, I cook for my husband and myself. And of course, as you saw last week, I actually got him um, cooking, or at least, you know, helping with prep. So, so we're, we're gonna be doing more of those where I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him get his hands dirty in the kitchen here, so, and help out. But in any event, back then, you know, it was really just me and I loved cooking. And so we made a deal way back then. If I made the mess, he would clean it up. And I thought that was a pretty good deal because I hated cleaning up messes. I hated cleaning up everything that I would get dirty for, you know, cooking some sort of meal or some sort of dessert. Um, so it is Friday. So I am going I'm by myself. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fix myself a cocktail. Friday night dinner. I'm not super hungry this evening because I spent the day in the city with my daughter-in-law and we went to the art museum. Um, it was a great day for an art museum because their air was working especially well. So it was nice and cool there. And then we went out to this yummy lunch called Vida. It's an Indian place that had amazing, amazing food. So, um, so I had a bigger lunch and a later lunch than usual. So I did want a light dinner. It is five o'clock somewhere. What do you, are, do you have anything in your hand, DS? Mm. Tonight I've got more of the right red sangria. Um, for those that follow me on Twitter, by the way, you can look for me on Twitty, Twitty, Twitter under Philly Philly Live. And um, last night I posted, I put, made 
um, a red sangria. I didn't just feel like red wine in the summer. Oh, I'm so sad. You're still in the office. Well, live vicariously through me, pretend you because I know you love to cook, so pretend you are cooking and you have a nice cocktail or a glass of wine in your hand and know that you will catch up once you get home. So, um, so thinking of you, hopefully your day ends pretty quickly. Hope you're nearing the end. But, um, but I was thirsty last night and I didn't, I just didn't feel like a regular glass of red wine. I wanted something cold. And so I started scouring the internet for ideas to make a quick sangria. Now I've made, actually I've never made a red sangria before. I've made white sangria before. Um, and you know, we've piled in all the fruit and we've let it sit for at least, you know, at least the better part of a day, if not overnight. And, um, and those are delicious. So this was gonna have to be a quickie one. Um, so now it's actually had the chance to absorb some of the fruit, the oranges that I put in there, so it's even better today. So I just put that over ice um, with a little splash of club soda, so it is very tasty. Um, but back to our pasta. Super simple, the lemon spaghetti. I, I love the simplicity of this dish. And if you like lemon, I love lemon. I love lemon in sweet and in savory. And, um, you know, I this, this to me hits all the right notes, especially on a hot day. Ooh, make a mojito. Actually, you know what's funny is I had a mojito. Um, my daughter-in-law and I we each had a cocktail before we had lunch, and hers was some sort of tea cocktail, and mine was a mojito, but it was with tamarind. Um, being an Indian restaurant, there was tamarind and something else, so it was a sweet sour. It was really, it was a very interesting combo, but very refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I will say, oh yes, yes. So if you have watched me for long, you'll see that my little girl, who it, cause I'm not totally alone. I have my little girl, my old girl with me, um, Shelby, and she's always checking out to make sure that something didn't drop on the floor. You know, she's just making sure. And then even when we did a takeout review, she was making sure nothing had had um, escaped. She's very food driven. She will do anything for food, kind of like her mama. So, um, so in any event, I'm going to get started. Super simple. We, it won't take long. I've already gotten my um, water starting to heat. In fact, I'm going to turn the heat back up on it. That's by the way, <laughs> you're all going to laugh because I'm sure it didn't take you as long as it took me to figure this out, this hack out. You know, have you ever been where you are either, you might just be cooking for your spouse at home or a significant other and, or for your family, or you're even having guests over and you're doing something like pasta and you're cooking a big pot. I, by the way, am not using a big pot because I'm using um, a half pound of pasta since I'm just cooking for me. I'm making some for today and tomorrow for me. Um, and it's long pasta and I'll go into that in a second about why I chose long pasta. That's what. Um, Giada is actually, she in the recipe, she uses spaghetti, but I really like actually using bucatini. Like, I like any excuse to use bucatini. It's one of my favorites. And um, But you could use any long pasta, and I do recommend a long pasta because it's a super light sauce, and so I feel like the sauce really, it just clings to it nicely, and since it's so simple, I like having the texture of the long noodles. Um, so I'm doing bucatini tonight. So sometimes I'll use just a flat skillet and fill it with water. And what's nice about that is um, that you use less water in it than when you're doing a big pot so that you have it deep enough for the long pasta to go in. And so I find that it tends to heat up a little quicker. Um, and I don't know, I just, I think it's, it's a little bit easier. Now I do know I've seen some hacks where they have, um, I'm shedding. I'm just gonna do this over here. I know I was shedding yesterday. I don't know if it's because it's so hot that my, my hair, so I'm gonna wash my hands. I certainly don't want any of this hair to end up in the food. So I'm just going to do that. I'm gonna wash my hands again. Um, 
but it's a good it's a good thing to think about that you don't always have to use the big old pot you could use a flat pot and I do know I've seen some hacks where they actually give a specific amount of water so that when the water evaporates the pasta is perfectly cooked now I've never tried that I'm kind of old-fashioned but um, oh yes you saw my basil on the counter so I brought this this plant I have by a window usually it's a huge um, I do herbs in the actually all season I do different kinds of herbs and of course right now I'm doing a ton of basil um, and basil will be finishing off our dish so our water is almost back up to boil oh but my hacks see I get so I get so sidetracked one of my hacks is get your water boiling ahead of time and then you know cover with a lid I don't have it covered right now because I was about to start the stream cover it with a lid and then when you when it's time to put the pasta in it won't take as long to get back up to speed so that's one thing I do it really saves me time it saves me from the oh my gosh is it going to take more than five minutes ten minutes to heat up this pot of pasta water um, it'll just take a couple minutes for it to get going so this is almost up to speed I'm going to be adding some salt let me get my salt here, some kosher salt, a bunch of that, because we are going to be using some of the water um, in the pasta to help make the sauce saucy. The sauce saucy, I'm not sure if I, I'm saying that right, so I'm just going to move this over. Now the one thing I will say when you do this is you have to be super careful because the water can certainly slosh um, if you're a novice cook. You'd probably make me super nervous doing this, but I've been doing this for a long time, so um, I kind of know how to handle that. That being said, you still obviously can run into some issues having hot water sloshing. So our water's up to boil. I'm gonna be putting our bucatini in. And since I'm using a different kind of pasta, I'm just gonna go by what the bucatini says. And um, this says for seven minutes for al dente, which is what I want. There's nothing worse than, for me, for having two, much cooked pasta meaning it's like mushy i do not like mushy pasta and to me that ruins a good dish I'm, there's nothing worse than being at a restaurant especially an italian restaurant where i'm expecting that it's going to be good and i'm going to get distracted so i'm setting my timer so i don't forget um and then we're, now we're going to put together the sauce so our sauce has just some simple ingredients that we're going to put together right away and the first one is a third cup of olive oil and so there's very simple ingredients here so you want to make sure all of the ingredients are good and good quality ingredients so this would be a great time to use a really good olive oil um, if you had one that was especially you know um, flavorful full bodied so I'm using uh, my olive oil and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grate some Parmesan. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way because that's a classic Amy to spill my cocktail. And I'm gonna use my microplane. It's my favorite, one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. And I just want a third cup of Parmesan cheese, but you know, there's nothing wrong with having a little extra cheese, right? So I'm gonna eyeball this. And I always feel like, and I might be wrong, but I always feel like, I agree. I know, I love that olive oil. Thanks, DS. Um, California Olive Ranch, I think it's just a really good quality olive oil that I know I can count on. I don't have to think twice about. Um, so I, that's a, that's a steady buy for me. All right. So this looks probably a little more than a third, but you know, nothing wrong with that. So we've got a third cup olive oil. We've got a third cup grated parm. I'm also going to do a quarter cup of lemon juice, or it's usually like one lemon. So let me get a quick knife to cut that and let me just toss around my pasta pasta a little bit make sure it's not sticking as you know notice I did not put any olive oil in my pasta water I know for years that was a big thing about do you or don't you um, and years ago I felt I, I felt like it came to the conclusion that you should not put oil in there so I have not been doing that for years but I do salt it now it's going to be a quarter cup of lemon juice or about one lemon so oh and I just realized I made a boo-boo so my boo-boo is I was supposed to zest this lemon first so I'm gonna zest it not ideal because I've already cut it but obviously you can see that this is not my first rodeo this has happened before 
So the zest, in the zest there's so much good flavor and oils from the lemons. So I'm just gonna bring this around. You wanna make sure when you're zesting, to first of all, not cut your fingers on the microplane. You also wanna make sure that you um, don't go too far into the white pith because that gets bitter. So those are a couple reminders and things. And this lemon zest we're gonna add at the end with the basil. So lots of yummy flavors, but super simple. So we got one. I got a little seed there. I don't want that seed to go in my pasta. So what happened to you more than once? The forgetting to zest before cutting the lemon? Because I've done that many times. I think I always say it's my brain is just like doing too many things at one time. And I kind of start forgetting where I am. Okay, so I got my nice zest there. And I want to take that lemon seed out because I do not want that to go. I'm gonna check my pasta real quick, make sure it's not sticking. It looks good. All right. And now we're going to juice these, le these lemon halves. This is a super juicy lemon. It's so funny. I think lemons and limes are funny because sometimes you get one that's just really stingy and it's really not letting much juice out. And then you have one like this that is just releasing everything, which is great. All right, so we've added olive oil. Oh, and by the way, I halved this recipe. So in the recipe cost um, for sauce for a pound of pasta, and I just want to cook half pounds. This is just for myself for two meals. So um, I just automatically have the recipe. So if you click on the link, you'll get the full recipe um, from Giada. So I've got my olive oil, my Parmesan cheese, my lemon juice, and then I'm going to add about a quarter to a half teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to start with like a rounded quarter and then I can always add more. I try to watch myself because I have high blood pressure, so it's just genetic. I've had it since I was in my early 30s. And so um, I just, I always, that's what I love about cooking at home is you can really control things like that. You can control the salt, the oil, the heat if you like things spicy. And now I'm just adding some fresh um, pepper and I'm adding about an eighth teaspoon. And then I'm just going to whisk this together. And this is our sauce. Just this yumminess. And we'll be adding the pasta directly to this in a little bit so you can see. This beautiful, beautiful yellow color with the, the yellow green of the um, olive oil and the lemon. Of course, our cheese is in there. I'm saving that cheese over here so we can add some extra at the end because nothing wrong with that. Let me check my pasta. I can tell by how it's moving that it still has a little bit to go. It's a little over a minute. While it's doing that, I'm actually... I'm actually going to start trimming up my basil. So I was going to do my basil a little different. I when I cut basil, I do it one of two ways. I either chop it on a chopping board with my knife, or I like to gather it, the leaves up, those bottom ones I just bring right back up, and then I like to use my kitchen shears because it, I find that when I use my kitchen shears, it doesn't bruise, and I don't know, I get nice little strips, and you can kind of go down the side so they're a little thinner. And that's a great way to do basil. And it seems sometimes more approachable and I find that I use my fresh herbs more if I don't have to get out the chopping block. If I just wanna snip, snip some on top, I think it's a great way to do it. So my pasta's almost done. I'm gonna get more basil because to me, you can never have too much basil. And the basil smells so good. One of the things I love about this recipe is its, it's simplicity, but also the scents. It just, from the lemon to the basil, and this doesn't have garlic, and you all know I love garlic, but this is one of the recipes, it's an Italian recipe, does not have garlic actually, which I think is really interesting. And I think my music's a little too soft, so I'm going to make it a little louder. Now that's my timer. I'm gonna get, continue to get some basil. Turn that off, let's see how our pasta's doing. My favorite things to do as a cook is to try pastas and see if they're done or not. Mmm, no. 
This is this is too crunchy. That's why you always have to check, right? I could actually tell by picking it up that it wasn't going to be done because it had too much. It was too taut. So we need this to go a little longer. One thing I'm going to do um, once I bring over the pasta is I'm going to be saving some pasta water because pasta water is liquid gold. It is such a great thing. No matter what kind of pasta you're making, always save some pasta water. I cannot tell you there were certain dishes that I did not even intend to use pasta water. I didn't save it and I always regretted it because sometimes after pasta sits a while, it just kind of seizes up, it all absorbs in and it would be nice to either A, if someone's going for seconds to be able to kind of freshen it up a bit or B, the next day. You know, if you put that pasta water in the fridge, warm that up and it really can revive a pasta the next day that really needs just a little something, something. All right, let's see. I wish I could find a smaller cucutini. I'm getting all these big long pieces. Okay, let me see. No. Wow, this stuff is stubborn. I think seven minutes was way off, um, Barilla, by the way. I think it's been nine. So we'll let it go, though. That's the problem. I'm going to actually continue to cut my basil because I would like even more basil. Oh, my goodness. I've been enjoying seeing all the yummy dishes um, by cooks showing all the stuff they're using in the garden. And basil, of course, is such a popular summer herb to see in recipes, and I'm all for it. I love basil. I know not everyone loves basil, so you could always just use, if you didn't care for basil, you could just use um, parsley. That would be fine. Um, if you like basil, then definitely use the basil. This will be a nice, and I, I just love a lot of fresh herbs. I feel like it gives it so much flavor. Okay, so in this plate, I have my lemon zest and my basil all set for the pasta whenever the pasta gets done. Hopefully, hopefully it gets done soon. Let me check it out. It just goes to show that, you know, we kind of think um, that cooking can be a science, and it is in some respects. With baking, it's often very specific. But here you can see the pasta is just not getting rushed. Okay, this, now this looks droopier. Look at it, looks droopier. I think this one's gonna be okay. Yes, there we go. You can even see, see how it's just more wiggly? The other way, it's tough, it was not ready. So I'm gonna get my pasta water right away. I'm using a scoop because I'm gonna need that scoop when I put it on my plate. So here's my liquid gold, here's my pasta water. It's all colorful, which is nice, turning off the heat. And I'm carefully, oh so carefully, using two hands and bringing this over because I'm gonna actually just add this. Look at all that steam, woo, get a little facial. I'm going to just add this directly to this yummy sauce that we made. I don't need those. So I'm gonna whisk up my sauce one more time. There we go. I'm just gonna add my pasta right to it. Cause there, that extra pasta water clinging to it will actually only help make our sauce. And if I need any, if it's not saucy enough, I can always add some of the extra that I set aside. I set aside a half a cup if you were making this a full recipe you want to set aside a cup that's usually when I'm making pasta for my family or whatnot I'm usually um, using a cup a measuring cup like that but a, but a cup full and I just literally just put a cup full there okay one of the things I'm gonna check I'm gonna to toss this one of the things I'm gonna check is the this the seasoning whether it needs any more salt and pepper and I'm actually pretty pleased with the sauciness. Since I took the pasta right from the pan into this, I'm pretty pleased with it. I might have to add a little bit more, but I do want to give a little taste just to see. 
the seasoning. Well, the other thing I say about being a cook is you get to taste things a lot. I think I need a little more salt. So I'm just gonna. So remember, we had cheese in there. We salted the water. We saw, so the pasta was seasoned. So you just want to check. I'm really happy with the sauciness, so I don't need to add any more water. And I'm going to add my lemon zest and my fresh basil. I'm just going to toss that. Put my liquid gold over there. I actually think they should sell pasta water. The problem is it's going to have such a high markup that I'm going to get frustrated. But I just think, like, wouldn't it be great just to have some pasta water that you could just, you know, use to thicken your sauces. I just don't make as much pasta because we, we love, I love it so much that I, I feel like I, I eat a lot less carbs than I used to. Um, not the vegetable, the purely vegetable ones, but I eat a lot less of the pasta, rice, and breads. More for special. All right, this looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, oh, the smell of the lemon basil is amazing. You're right, it's awesome. Let me take a little sip. Mm. And I'm gonna plate this. Now, I have not done this little trick that I've been seeing on social media. So let's see how I do it. This little trick of making, there's two different ways I've seen it. I've seen it where, um, Cooks either take their pasta, they twirl it in, and then they move it onto the plate, lift out their fork or whatnot, or they just go sideways. So I'm going to try, I think, the more mountain of pasta. So I'm going to bring this in there. I'm going to twirl it. Let's see, I don't feel like I'm getting enough pasta. Let me just try again, okay. Now I'm going, there we go, that's a better. I'm gonna twirl it in here. Come on. This isn't totally working for me. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, maybe I took too much. Maybe I was being greedy. See, what about these guys that aren't twirling? Ah, oh, this is not going well for me. Let me try it again. Okay, there we go, right? There we go, okay. Okay, we'll just come to do something with those little ones. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Oh, I think, oh, I think I have it. Woohoo! There we go. Lovely. And I'm gonna sprinkle some cheese over this. Oh, it's already, it's already, <laughs> it's already diving down. Oh, it's losing some of its prettiness. Uh oh, and I'm putting a nice thing of basil in there. Oh, it's, it kind of, it sank a little bit. So what do you think? What do you think? Did I do okay with that? <laughs> okay, so now the proof is in the pudding I need to try. So now it's not gonna be pretty anymore, but. Oh, it smells so good. Lemon, basil, cheese, olive oil. Let's see. I'm just gonna have to go in. Mm. First of all, what hits you right away is the brightness of the lemon. It just, it's such like, but it's not tart because the oil helps balance it. So it's just like this wonderful lemony, fresh, clean flavor, because there's no garlic, pure lemon. But the saltiness from the cheese and from the pasta water that helps season the sauce, and then you taste the freshness of the basil. Um, and then for me, if I'm gonna have pasta, I want it to be a texture thing. So the reason I chose the bucatini instead of just a regular spaghetti, which I love regular spaghetti, who doesn't like regular spaghetti? But I love the texture of bucatini. It's a little bit more bite, and that that's how I ended it. Ended with that bite of the bucatini. Delicious, simple, delicious. This would be great as a light meal with a salad, or um, it could go on the side but do try it. It is really spectacular. And again, the only thing we heated was a short time with a, a pot or a pan for the pasta. 
So do try it. And, oh, coming up, I almost forgot. And DS, if you try it, you'll have to let me know. Giada, this is one of her classic recipes and it's one I've made. I've been making it for a long time. It's one of my favorites. Um, coming up next week, we're back to cocktail night on Wednesday at 7.30. I am making, this is funny, I'm making a Hugo spritz. So we've already done, I love a good spritz. So I did an Aperol spritz a month or two ago, maybe it was in May. And, um, and I'm gonna be doing a Hugo spritz. I'm not gonna tell you yet what's involved. You can of course look it up, but I'll be giving hints as I start posting about it leading up to it. What's funny is that I do follow Giada also on Twitter and they, and I also get her emails like from a newsletter and they just shared a big batch recipe for a, they call it the Hugo cocktail. And I looked up and like, it's gotta be a similar thing. And it is. What's cool is that in the Hugo spritz, two ingredients it does call for are mint and lime. And in hers, she uses basil and lemon, which are very interchangeable. So I actually think what we're gonna do on Wednesdays, we're gonna make them two ways. I'm gonna make one, the classic way that I had originally seen, which was with mint and lime. And I'm gonna, we're also gonna make it her way with basil and lemon and Andy and I will each try and see which one we, we like better. Although they would be interchangeable, which is just nice. So whatever you have in your kitchen, you know, you can use. So that's Wednesday. And then next weekend on Sunday at 3 p.m., I'm going back to baking. So please, please pray that it's going to be cooler in the city because if it is another hot in the 90s day, I might have to change my mind because I don't think I want to bake. The baking won't be for long because I'm making a key lime pie, probably one of my my favorite pies, um, especially in the warm months. I just think I always have room for key lime pie always like there's just it's just a light dish but when i had made um this recipe years ago it was a scratch one and this does not use condensed milk and nothing wrong with condensed milk but this is one that you make a curd and it to me was just blew my socks off such a great recipe and then also you make a homemade graham cracker crust and honestly it's, you know, it's lovely having those easy ones already made and I use them because it's quick, it's easy, just throw in the, you know, the inner ingredients. But when you make it by scratch, it is so much better. So that'll be next Sunday at 3 p.m. A key lime pie. So I had fun with you tonight. Thank you, DS. I expect to see a picture of whatever cocktail that you make yourself. And um, for everyone else, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you're eating delicious food. And I hope that you are not hot in your kitchen because like that really takes down the kitchen a notch. Um, so I hope you're staying cool. And until we eat again, have a great weekend.